Oh, from New York, New York, you are listening to Extra Time, presented by AT&T 5G. I am Andrew Weeby with my partners in soccer. A full house today, Kaylin Carr, Matt Doyle, David Goss, Charlie Davies. Coming up today from the AT&T 5G virtual studios, MLS is back. Week one, mere hours Charlie. away, we're going to get you ready Charlie. for opening day. We'll talk CCL Joy, CCL Free Space, and preseason's over for the Rapids. You know we can't only have good things in that competition. we got transfer news. Ache Ache to Houston. Pat Onstad is in Spain to try to seal the deal. MLS Cubs odds are here from BetMGM. 538 loves LAFC, and so do we in what could be Carlos Vela's last season. We have our inaugural trophy draft. It will be absurd. We're going to draft every single team, give some to Anders, and the wooden spoon counts everybody, and your mail is here. Name our best MLS jerseys and potential 2022 ETR road trips, and I talked right through the horns. Charlie is back. 2022 has not it had not officially started. It felt just it felt like a mirage until we had Charlie here with us. How you feeling, man? How you doing? What's up? I'm hyped. Everything's good. Um, you know, it's, it's time to start. 2022, let's, let's start off with a bang. Uh, Chicharito said it's showtime this week, which I really appreciated from him. You know, every quote that he says, everything he says, it's, you know, I'm, I'm writing that down. I'm memorizing she it. He just going, sounds like a Lakers fan. I don't know like, if he uh, is, but he sounds like he'd be a Lakers fan. You calling him a front runner? <laughs> no, I'm just saying he's probably a Magic Johnson guy. Okay. All right. Uh, before we get into it, we got a big show. I ran you through it. There's a lot to cover. We're going to have to hustle to get you out of here in, I don't know, less than three hours, basically. I'm going to start us here. Kaylin, with you. What are you most looking forward to in week one? Go to MLSsoccer.com, folks. Check the schedule. Check out all the previews. Update yourself. Get yourself ready. We'll help you as much as we can. 30 seconds. Week one. What are you looking forward to, Kaylin? Well, I don't know if you can tell because I got this fresh new LAFC kit on. So uh, <laughs> I will also be looking at that match because I think that's, uh, for me, probably the top match of the weekend going against Colorado. Two teams I think uh, could potentially be fighting for the top in the West. And then Acosta going against his former side. K going against his former side. I think both of them could potentially be best 11 midfielders this year. So uh, a lot to play for individually as well as for both clubs. 3.30 p.m. Eastern, Univision, Turin, Twitter, and English. It's the first national TV game. Charlie, we haven't heard much from you. Let's hear from you. What are you looking forward to, man? I'm looking forward to Paxson Pomichol because we, we talk about young American talent and, and players who've, who've excited us. I love, you know me, I love players who, who, have, who are, have to come back from something and injuries have, have plagued his young career. And so for a player like Passon Pomacall, who has showed a lot of talent in, in the heart of midfield, this could be his season, his comeback season. So I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do in the first game of the year. He started 17 of 19 games to finish last year that he was available for. So um, I'm, I'm hoping he starts off with, with a bang. Doyle, do you have sell-on percentage on the Paxton Pomichol <laughs> take here, or like, do you have, does he have? It's like training compensation or got, solidarity got, that has to come Pomichol, down the line. I got Pomichol, I got Jeremy Avobasi, I got Miles Robinson, uh, I, still Dello, Jonathan, I, feel, I still have I like Jonathan he, I, Lewis, which is maybe not yeah, great uh -huh. after last night, but you know, I got my stable. I got my stable talent. Well, okay, holding on to it. Don't sell. Don't sell. Dave, what about you, man? I know you're on the road. You're about to hit the road. I don't know when you can hit the, yeah. the airport here, but. I think I'm number one most excited about Eric Zavaleta and Greg Vanny meeting for the first time and getting to work together. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be headed to DC Charlotte, uh, and I haven't been, you know, at a good MLS regular season game. I'm gonna try and get out to to some of the pregame festivities uh, that I know the Screaming Eagles are putting on alongside the Charlotte FC fans that will be traveling. Obviously, first game for a new team. Uh, I've never seen Hernan Losada in person, so excited to see him on the sideline, get to Audi Field. Uh, it'll be great, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking Uncle Joe's uh, Amtrak on the way down, so I'm very excited. And you got the double dip because you're going to be in Charlotte on your own time in week Bruh, two. I'm a Charlotte FC super fan. Everyone knows yeah. that. <laughs> I'm like, OG on. day one. Glass half full, baby. When they win the World Cup in 2075... I will be there. I Perfect. will have been. I'll be the crying guy when, you know, Bill Bow finally wins something and they show the grandpa. One shining moment, David yeah. Goss and Charlotte FC. I'm looking forward to cross conference matchups. We did not get a ton last year. I mean, just the nature of the way the schedule was built out. We have Philly, Minnesota, 
Uh, to start, you have Austin Cincinnati, which is like a spoon derby. I mean, Cincinnati's trying to pass this thing on. It's, it's like hot potato. They're like, Austin, can you take this from us? Please, please, please do so. Uh, let's see who else is going down in that one. San Jose, New York, which I think somebody's going to take here in a little bit. This is absolute chaos for them. Portland, Philly, New Minnesota. England. Minnesota. Yeah, I said it. Uh, you weren't listening. Atlanta, oh, Kansas City. Yeah, <laughs> uh, L.A., New York City, uh, and Seattle, Nashville used to be, but it's not anymore. Doyle, what about you? What are you looking forward to? Take us a uh, different you, direction. Yeah, you mentioned San Jose versus versus the Red Bulls, and look, I, one thing I like is that when when coaches are honest, and b- both the both Matias Almeida and and Gerhard Struber have been like really really honest about their feelings on their respective rosters uh, this week, and Almeida has basically said all off season that like this. is going to be my final year because I'm not getting my way. Uh, Struber said, I hope to have three, four, five new additions, key additions this offseason. It hasn't worked that way, so we have to be honest with the fans about what type of team we are. Um, It's like the self-loathing derby with these two teams. and It's like, I mean, you called it chaos in your previous little blurb right there. It feels like chaos is inevitable in this one, and I, I like a little bit of chaos to start the season. Oh, it's wonderful. Can I just say, it is wonderful. I ESPN. love that part of preseason at the very end where, like, the first two weeks, <laughs> month maybe, everybody's like, oh, enjoy your football, play together, like, and, you you know, you beat up on a couple, like, U18 national teams or whoever it is, and then <laughs> you, like, suddenly then go on a tour of, like, Mexico and you get stomped or whatever it is, and you're finally, like, or even against other MLS teams, and you're like, you have that moment where the coach realizes, like, we're in trouble yeah. right now. <laughs> and we've seen a bunch of... <laughs> managers in MLS like say the quiet part out loud <laughs> and basically some of it is a message I think to the front office but um yeah oh, it sure. adds some intrigue to uh it adds some intrigue to the, how do you uh, take that in the locker room if you're a player <laughs> it's only happened to me once in Chicago but I could see the coach uh De Los Cobos like I could see it register for him where he was like oh <laughs> we are in trouble and you're looking at us I, different, man. Like, <laughs> hey, stop looking at us that way. Like, we're still we're you know professionals what? The here. The good news was is he was right, or the bad news, I guess, was he was right. We were in trouble, but uh, that's a whole other story. I think some of that was on him as well. But anyway, uh, there is still uh, there is still hope for all 28 teams right now. And look, that hope might evaporate. TBD. Hopefully, it lasts through week one. The TV schedule again. Go check it in WestSoccer.com. Very easy to get, but I'll run it through real quick for you. The season starts Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, Philly, Minnesota, on ESPN Plus. If you're listening to X. Extra Time, if you listen to Extra Time, if you subscribe to Extra Time, if you enjoy Extra Time and you don't have ESPN Plus, what are you doing? Uh, LAFC, Colorado, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, Univision, Tutti and Twitter in English. That's the first national TV game of the inaugural weekend here of uh, 2022. There's a Twitch watch-along show starting at 5.45 on Saturday. Big Sues, Doyle, Kalen, Mike LaBelle are going to join you there. Dave, you're going to be, of course, in D.C. for that one. Highlights, reactions, analysis, silliness, interaction on the Twitch platform. Don't watch alone. If you're going to, just pull that up. They're going to take you all the way to 7.30 p.m. Eastern for Portland Timbers, New England on Big Fox Fox Deportes, New England headed that way to defend their Supporters' Shield Sunday. Again, that one starts at 1 p.m. Eastern as well. Orlando, Montreal, and ESPN+. Plus. Two national TV games, Atlanta Sporting Kansas City on FS1 at 3 p.m. Eastern. LA Galaxy, NYCFC, who just get to stick around LA uh, on ESPN at 5 p.m. Eastern. And then a pair of ESPN Plus games to end the night. Houston RSL and Seattle Nashville at 8 p.m. Eastern. Charlie, you and I are going to be at Twitter Spaces during the second half of Seattle Nashville. Uh, MLS After Dark will basically just be sitting around talking about the weekend that was. Hit us with questions, comments, whatever you want to do. Tell us what we should cover in Instant Replay because we're going to tape that right after as well. And before we jump into it and dig deep, I have some homework for everybody listening to this show. Look, we all know that it's opening weekend. We all know that MLS is back. We are all excited about it. We're jacked. Whatever it might be, fill in your adjective. There are lots of soccer fans in this country, I'm sure, that it's not front and center for them. We want to make it front and center for them. So invite them to watch with you. Invite them to an opening weekend game. Tell them, hey, let's buy some tickets together for something down the line. Get into your group chat. Send some highlights if you see a sick goal that people who love the game should see. Ask the bar you're at to turn on the game. Like, make this league, make our game feel bigger. Make it bigger. Like, that's what we're here for. We all love this. That's why we listen to this show. That's why we do this every week. That's why we devote our time to it. Let's make it bigger. So that's my homework for you. I don't normally do that, but uh, you get the you get the gist here. All right. I feel like I've just been like 
rattling stuff off, and I have so much more to rattle off here because there's there's like MLSsoccer.com has all the previews out. Doyle, you wrote a, a novel basically <laughs> on the start of the season. Your tears came out today. You had East and West builds. You had why your team will win Supporters Shield, and some of those made me chuckle. Tom Bogert's got a ton of content out. The power rankings came out. I, I'm, I'm writing. There's too much to consume. But one thing I will say. One, subscribe to Extra Time, subscribe to the call up there, Daniel Slayton this week, and then also 11 a.m. Eastern every day on uh, the MLS Twitter feed. Dave, take it away. MLS Today is here. Twitter Spaces show. It's been awesome so far. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. Every day, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we're going to talk 30, 45 minutes just about what's going on. And I think we all feel like a rumor about Ache Ache comes out. And we gotta, we're got we grinding, waiting two days to get to an ETR record. Uh, and now's a place for us to sort of talk about stuff like that every single day. Uh, I'll have guests on who are covering stories, players, coaches, whatever else is going on, fun conversations or news hits, uh, previewing games, reacting to games, all that type of stuff, and mainly talking about what you want to talk about. So if you feel like we are missing out on talking about how good the press off the right side looks for RSL or how good at home Vancouver has been, and we're not mentioning those things, this is a spot to do it. So tweet at me, uh, tweet at the show, jump on in. We're going to have fan questions as well as we go along. So kind of just a spot for everyone to enjoy MLS every single day and just to grow our community a little bit more. Ton you of really, want, you really want people tweeting at you, though? Like, you're pretty soft about about Twitter, right? Like, I love like, it. Like, if people if people tweet mean stuff at you, it, it really affects you. I've seen that happen. I, I love it. Also, they should feel that they have control over the show. Because if you tweet stuff at me, I will react. I'm incapable of keeping <laughs> myself down. So you kind of really dictate the mood, energy, and speed of the show. Uh, hit him up about MLS Next Pro. Just spam him about the new league coming here. March 25th is the opening game. St. Louis uh, City SC2 versus Rochester, New York FC. Uh, and the full schedule is out. All the games are going to be streamed at MLSNextPro.com. Looking forward to going down to Lawrence for some Sporting KC2 games with my family and the boys. Hitting Swope Park. It's going to be a good time. Uh, all right, let's do it. CCL review starts us off. Was a pretty good midweek run here. Like, other than for the Rapids who lost in PKs, the Comunicaciones, and a veritable snowstorm. That hurt. It started well, but man, the big O, Dave. CCL juju, like, just flowing through the place. Santos Laguna did not know what they were in for. Just, there were no, like, there's no thrusting this time around, but there maybe, there maybe <laughs> should have been. We need to get Frank Klopas out of retirement to do that. The 3-0 win, man. Montreal are on. Next up, Cruz Azul or, or Forge. I don't know which one. What'd you make of this, uh, make of this game, this result, this performance? Well, for starters, as you said, the Big O's magic. Like, you could taste it through the television. La Cultura. The with culture. The, yeah. with, with the, the, did they have the square turf like uh, puzzle going on? Because that's always how it used to be. It was just like it was squares of like a puzzle that they had to put together on the field instead of the one big the, carpet. The ghosts and the energy of CCL lore. Cameron Porter. Through. Cam <laughs> Porter, right? Coming down from the sky. Uh, and then it was a dominant performance. 60% possession, 3 0 at home. Never gave up a legitimate opportunity. It was. I thought Montreal looked solid down in in Santos, uh, and they looked dominant in this game against the Liga MX team. It was awesome. It felt like a coming-of-age moment to me for Georgie, and I know he was great last year, but he just was shrugging defenders off yesterday. He He knew where he wanted to go before the play started. Every time that they pressed him tight, he dribbled around players. Really good on the he half looks, turn. Really good on the half turn. <laughs> he just looked. He was just inviting everything onto himself, and he just looked dominant. He looked like a guy who went to Europe this offseason, trained, and was like, "Yeah, I'm better than a lot of people in the world." Uh, and so the goal's absurd. And Kyoto had an on day. He'll have off days, but when he has an on day, he's still really good. And it just felt like Montreal went from there. Kone looked shaky at the start. Then he gets his feet, and all of a sudden he realizes he can dribble through every single player whenever he wants to. Uh, it was epic, and I was super pumped about it. Did not realize the controversial take I had this week wasn't that Montreal would get through, but it was that Colorado would get through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Quinn Castellan has dealt with the cold just a tad better, it seems like. Hey, Montreal saying Kai Kamara. We missed that. We have two, uh, two, two of Kai's peers here who have now hung up their boots but Kai he just he's timeless he's he's going for nine, records 
nine teams now, Charlie. Like how how do you, that's hard to it's hard to play for nine teams. That's now our record. That's insane. It it is hard, but if you're a striker and you're you're putting the ball in the back of the net, teams are going to sign you. You're always going to have interest. And for Kai Kamara, he's he's really tough to deal with. He's a handful and and I mean, the man can jump. So, <laughs> as a striker, when you're looking for a target in the box, he's he's always going to be the go-to guy when uh, he's leading the line. Damo Duro, eight teams in his MLS career. Nathan Sturgis, uh, James Riley, seven teams. Nine teams, Kalen. Yeah, it's incredible. It's like, it's, it's, you know, back in the day, that'd be more than half the league. We're, you know, we've expanded since then, so there's still time for Kai. But Yeah, they're setting a challenge. And the, the most impressive <laughs> part is none of those uh, are Chivas USA. It's not included in the mm. list, which is generally when you get high. Like, I think Nathan... <laughs> was at Chivas. James Riley was at Chivas. Damodura was not at Chivas, though. So credit to both mm. those guys, both in my draft class, 2006. Um, but yeah, Kai, I mean, even when you look at his performance with the national team and you watch AFCON, like his game has changed a little bit too, where he can actually uh, drop back a little bit more and facilitate versus necessarily just staying high. But when you look at Montreal and the way that they play, um, yeah, Mason Toy, I know Goss is, was concerned about what this might mean for him, but I think Ultimately, like having a guy like Kai coming in is going to give them some uh, some options, and I think he's going to be able to fit into that system pretty well. And um, yeah, it's almost weird that he hasn't played for Montreal for some reason. I feel like with the like, I don't know, he was his favorite player was Drogba, and I think you know, big hero of his. And so um, he's always had like, I feel like he just people love him everywhere he goes. So it's amazing to see even just early days how Montreal fans have kind of come around him. Instagram reporting, Duya Drogba putting in his story, congratulations for Kai Kamara. Not so bad. in case you weren't on top of that, I was all over for you, Kalen. <laughs> NYCFC smacked Santos de Guapiles at home in L.A. Doyle, th- this was a yeah. dominant, dominant performance. This, this looks like the team that if you were going to bet on right now to make history, NYCFC would, would be those guys. Yeah. Uh, they they look really really good um, bringing Tati back this year for at least the first half of the season. Um I didn't expect it, uh, and Tati, to his credit, does not appear to be pouting. He is he is out there trying to score, you know, two goals every time he plays, which is fantastic. Maxi Morales looks young again. They got Keaton Parks back into the into the lineup in the second half of this game, which I think is a big deal. Keaton Parks is really really good, and people don't talk about him. They have a little bit more center back depth now. Young Andres Jason. Um, Played the final half hour at right back. He looked really good. I don't think he's going to start over Tavon Gray there. But that was an area where like they didn't have enough depth. And it looks like they have depth now from within um, with two homegrowns. So like they just check a lot of boxes. And they have not come out looking like a team... You know, that just took two months off, man. They they came out and they smacked the Costa Rican team in Costa Rica. Uh, and then they just absolutely smoked them at home in in downtown Los Angeles. Yes, in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I do think that NYCFC have the best chance at winning the, the, uh, the CCL of the MLS teams that are remaining. Yeah, they're on the side with the fewest League MX teams. That, that matters. We know that. Leon moved on. We don't know yet on this Thursday whether uh, the Seattle Sounders will move on after that nil-nil draw against Motagua, but they're at home. You would assume Anders, that they will. Anders guaranteed it. Knock, the, knock, 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 knock. Blame Anders, Anders guaranteed. Sounders fans, if this blows up in your face, I expect a call from Brian Schmetzer directly to produce an Anders. I will provide the phone number. Perhaps even an address. I'm not going to lie. Be, if that happens, that. I think Anders will be the one upset on the phone, not the That's true. <laughs> That's true. Reverse that one. Yeah, yeah. reverse that one. Uh, yeah, look, the Rapids uh, The Rapids lost. VAR giveth and it taketh away in CCL. It gave them a man advantage, and then it taketh away because they had a series winning goal that was called back uh, after Max had a goal for them and his, his debut goal. It looked a very nice goal for him. But uh, Diego Rubio, just a hair offside on the uh, the pass across didn't get it uh, you know i liked the the blankets and the shootout but i think you know look comunicaciones a little bit less soft in that sense dealt with the cold better pk's find a way to get it done they celebrated on the field in puffer jackets which i'm assuming that they bought and customized for this event only uh, but comunicaciones move on they will face nycfc we'll talk more about the rapids in just a sec of course the rapids uh don't move on but the revs do they don't have to play a game to do so they'll get pumas after the cavalry forfeit and again leon await we think the sounders knock on wood 
Dave, walk us through Ache Ache, the Bogert bomb, the scoop. Of, I don't know what what his his tagline is going to be. We're working with him on that. It's a it's a workshop right now. But Hector Herrera in Houston, Pat Onstad in Madrid to try to seal this deal. I mean, this could be huge. Yeah, it's it's a signing we have talked about for Houston for a really long time of an L tree superstar, um, a, a player who could tap into the energy in the Mexican American community in that city. Uh, it's also a signing in a stratosphere that Houston's just never touched in terms of the quality of player, the position he holds in the world. This is a guy who was captain for Porto for a number of years. Then you go to Atletico Madrid. Now it hasn't worked out perfectly for him there. The first year he played over a thousand minutes, the last two years under Simeone, he hasn't been a consistent part of the team. He is not a starter in and saying that. He did, he did start a Champions League game yesterday. In saying that, this rumor came out on Saturday. He started on Sunday and on Wednesday. So <laughs> yeah. either reactionary of need or something in between. Um, our understanding that his contract's up this summer, so he can move on a free deal when this contract ends. Uh, Roma, uh, Valencia, and uh, unknown EPL team were the three teams that were looking at bringing him in in January. Uh, we believe the asking price was about 5 million euros from Atletico Madrid, and it didn't happen. So for Ache Ache, he's looking at, I need to get into form and be playing going into the World Cup. He has continued to be a locked in best 11 starter for Tata Martino even as he hasn't played, but at some point he has to get fitness and earn that spot going down the stretch into the World Cup. So I think that's the thought process from him, as well as then setting up his move and setting up his lifestyle for what it'll be after his European adventure and coming to Houston. And obviously for Houston, we're talking about new ownership group. They said they would spend. He is not going to come in and be an elite chance creator in MLS. I think of Bastian Schweinsteiger, Jermaine Jones, even sort of at times with Rooney, guys who came into this league that are just high IQ, high experience, quality soccer players, and you can figure it out with them in your team to be successful. And I actually really like Karaskia and Vera alongside him. Karaskia, a guy who can sort of do a little bit of everything as well. Um, and I think Ache Ache could be an epic move for Houston. The question becomes, do they spend any money on a transfer and get him in now? Or do they not and get him on a free, but they then probably have to wait till July 1st to have him play in MLS? How would how would he be received in Houston, Kalen? As our resident, uh, former Houston resident. As our resident for me. I mean, <laughs> a lot of resident, be... yeah, a lot of resident. Uh... <laughs> from, from um, yeah, from like bringing the Dynamo back into like the spotlight in the city perspective, it would be huge. And I had, you know, sort of come on this show last year and said, like, I was sort of pleading for Chicago to make this signing. And I think because I had seen from playing there when Blanco was there of what a Mexican, uh, you know, national team star can do for bringing that club back in. But now we've seen them take a little bit of a different path or actually a, a similar path in some ways with um, their new Mexican player as well as um, Shakiri, which taps into a whole different side of the city. But um you know, I, I would say this wasn't the type of signing that we've seen the Dynamo generally make. But when they came in and brought in the new ownership group, as well as Pat coming in, um, they talked about this ambition. They talked about, hey, it's going to take a little bit of time. So I almost think like even if this doesn't happen until his contract uh, runs out, um, the idea of him, it seems to suit all parties. Because I think for him, getting ga if he's playing already with the national team um, and he's not getting minutes with this club team, then you were, that gets rid of some of the fears of like, okay, if I move to MLS, is that going to potentially, you know, change the dynamic with the Mexican national team um, or not? And then you see maybe some young players like Araujo coming in and, you know, the eyes are here now. Vela and Chicharito is a whole different story um, in each individual case as well. But uh, as far as even just the way he fits with the team, like the Dynamo have dynamic players. Like they have players that can get up and go, but have been needing somebody that can really dominate the ball and like either like get on it and control the game from the midfield position. Um, and so I think from that standpoint, uh, he would fit really well into this system as well. Charlie, what do you think? This is the sort of player that I would assume, believe that Paul Nagamura would just absolutely adore. He's a game changer. I think for, for Houston, for the players across the league, when you have a player 
who sees the field so well and can create chances, can dictate the tempo, who can rally the, the locker room. Man, he, he has so much influence. Like you, you touched on Jermaine Jones having that kind of influence when you come into a team. That's a player who can lift up a whole locker room and a, and a whole fan base. And, and that's what you're bringing to the table when you have a player like Ache Ache. He can score goals from distance, yes. He can, as, as much of an asset as he is on the pitch, he is just as valuable, if not more, off the pitch. So this would be tremendous for the Dynamo. We'll see if they can get it done. Again, reports that Pat Onsat is in Madrid. Uh, you assume trying to lock something down, whether it be immediately with a little bit of a fee or maybe later on, TBD on that one, but certainly would be a club-changing signing for the Houston Dynamo. And, and we heard, heard Nagamura. He talks a lot about how they're restarting their culture. They're changing their culture where a guy like this can do that and more. Uh, some quick news here. RSL after Jefferson Sabarino, maybe a return for Jeff Jeff Jefferson, Anderson Julio as well. We'll see if they can get those done. Fabrizio Romano reports that Toronto FC are going to sign uh, Genoa's captain and former Zenit left back Dominico Crisito. Uh, that seems like to help out Lorenzo Insigne, etc. Uh, they don't have a ton of depth uh, at left back either. And then, uh, Doyle, I, I want to give you an open platform here. You have as long as you want to talk about the Junior Moreno to FCC trade to oh, Cincinnati. Stop. If you would like to just, I don't know if you have a filibuster here or, you know, just uh, get on your soapbox to, to talk about this ad nauseum. Nah, I'm just kidding, but he went to Cincinnati. So they needed help in the midfield. They got it. Let's talk week one. And let's talk Carlos Vela. Because on MLS today, Michele came Michele. on and said, "Hey, this I'm he, Michele. God, over and over. Who you can hear, by the way, three thirty PM Eastern time on 2DN on the sideline for LAFC Colorado Week One. Look at you. Yep, Carlos Vela's future uh, maybe in doubt a little bit whether it's in LA or not." Uh, LAFC also uh, loved by 538. They are second in the probabilities for them. Uh, they're like saying, hey, where are they going to finish? How are they going to do? LAFC are second, so you can't accuse us of being the only ones who love LAFC. Carlos Vela's future, Doyle, what did you make of, of this report that this could be the last year? What would it mean for LAFC? And uh, what are we going to see from Vela in week one against Colorado on Univision, Turian, and Twitter? I mean, it's, it's a coin flip. Vela, when he's motivated and bought in, um, is the best player in the league still when he's healthy as well. Uh, when he's not, uh, he, he is definitely not. And it didn't seem like he was as motivated and bought in last year as he has been in the past. Certainly not as much as he was in 2019. Um, it's a, it, as he said, it's, it's final year of his contract. It's a contract year. Um, we all know what that tends to mean for professional athletes. Uh, and, and if Vela is approaching it that way, uh, that probably bodes pretty well for LAFC. I suspect that is the version of Carlos Vela that, that we're going to see in LA this year. I also, like, according to Michele and from everything that we've heard over the years, look, he, he loved being in San Sebastian. His wife's family is from San Sebastian. Um, they are you know, ready to go back to San Sebastian after this year. Um, now, that is probably contingent upon him having an opportunity to play, you know, first division soccer for a good amount of money. Um, and there's no guarantee that's going to, uh, you know, be an opportunity that's present. But that's all the more reason to expect him to have a really, really good year for LAFC this year. Because if he scores, you know, 20 goals and 12 assists, um, even at age 33, that is the type of productivity in MLS that translates uh, to Europe. And that is the type of thing that will um, give him the happy landing that he's looking for back in Europe. What's your take on the offseason, LAFC, have had, Charlie? We haven't gotten your take on this. They've kind of switched things up. They've, they've gone in MLS. They've made a bunch of big trades and reinforced in that way to try to go after what is the ultimate prize. And Steve Trundle hasn't been necessarily shy about talking about it. He said, look, the, the goal is MLS Cup, not to put too much pressure on us. Is that a realistic goal for LAFC? Do you think they can attain that? Well, if you have literally Kellen Acosta, Carlos Vela, and Brian uh, Rodriguez playing at, at their peak and, and they're all fit and healthy, yes. Because we all know... If you're carried by a, a team of, of playmakers, creators, Arango, Arango up top scoring goals, this team really has a, a chance to make a run. For me, I've always 
looked at LAFC and I'm like, man, the back line and the goalkeeping position was such such a, a, a problem. I think when you get Crepo, it, it's, he makes a big difference. I mean, he, he yeah. kept Vancouver in the game uh, in, in contention for playoff spots for a long time because he, he has that capability. And I think Vancouver thought, okay, um, Hassal has done a, a great enough job that we're, we're, we're willing to kind of work with him and, and see what he can bring for the future. And they got a good price for, for Crepo. So I think for LAFC, and I got to play with Steve Toronto. What a, I was just going to ask. What a great teammate he was. I mean, he, he always, I'm on one, made sure that he enjoyed every time he was with in a camp and enjoyed that, that experience. But I always felt that he was trying to give me advice. You know, and, and every time I, I had a camp or a training session, you know, he'd be the, the, the player to come over and be like, hey, I think you should do this. Or, you know, you did this really well. And so I, I think that communication translates really well from a, as a player to, to being a coach. And so when they hired him, it wasn't a surprise to me. You know, you could say, man, from Bob Bradley, you want to go for, for a big headlines kind of grabber for, for uh, an LAFC type club because it, the whole glitz and glamour in Hollywood – but I think they went with a really smart approach. Um, Thorrington is is he's a sharp guy, and he knew exactly what he was getting uh, with Torundolo. Steve Torundolo is, is a coach who's going to try and build the locker room, build the chemistry between the the coaches, the staff, and the players. If you can get Carlos Vela bought in, and just from the looks of it, Brian Rodriguez looks like he's kind of bought in and, and wants to get back to his best and playing at a, at a high level. Because if you do want to play in Europe, then you have to perform. You have to take it serious. And so if he can do that, this team definitely has a shot. Absolutely. Dude, let me just yeah. jump in really quick. As we were talking, it just came through uh, that Houston has yeah. acquired an international roster spot. Uh, uh, they also... Uh. Interesting. Wonder who that could be they for. Also, Wonder who that they also could be bought for. out Joe Corona's deal uh, earlier this week. Yeah. So they, they do have room on the scene. So there is a spot in uh, central yes, midfield and, that's a, that's, and an international there's, there's, there's a little uh, <laughs> A common positionality there. Uh, okay, I'm getting excited now. Ache, Ache and MLS at 31. I'm, I'm all about that. All about that. Dave, can I ask you about the Rapids here? People have been quick to jump on them after the CCL exit, the Comunicaciones, and say, well, this is just a sign that last year was a fluke. And maybe people is like a Twitter straw man. It, it, may, it very well may be. W what is the measurement of success for them in 2022? Because I firmly believe that this is a playoff team. In this league, if you are tactically confident and you have your, you know, everything straight, which they do and have had under Robin Frazier, if you play hard every week, if you have depth, and you have quality depth, which, again, they have all those things, you will absolutely make the playoffs. But maybe first in the West is not it. What is success for the uh, Rapids And a year? really good home field advantage is another thing to add in there. Yeah, that's uh, true. What is success, I think, it depends on who is measuring. I picked them third in the West coming into the season. What happened last night doesn't change my mind about that. What happened in a one-game high-intensity knockout is the question mark around them but they're in the way they lost it doesn't make you look at them and say they can't win games throughout the regular season in MLS. Yeah. Uh, I think the top of the West points number will be higher than it was last year. And so I don't think they'll be at that top. But you see, as you said, tactical identity, understanding of their team, uh, a ton of pieces. But we talked about the Philadelphia Union for three years saying, oh, it looks good in the regular season. But now we know it'll look good in the regular season. Wake me up when you do it in the playoffs. And then they won a supporter shield. And then the following year, they finally did it in the postseason. That's where the Rapids stand is unfortunately for large stretches of this season. If they play well, people will say, yeah, for sure. We saw that last year. We saw that at times two years ago. Uh, show me that you can have a finisher. Show me your score goals in a must win 90 minute scenario. And unfortunately, CCL was their biggest chance to show that until they get to the playoffs and they didn't they, they were the thing they failed at in this game was what they failed at in the playoffs last year against the Portland Timbers it's what they've talked about in the offseason it's what they promised that they make a signing to fix none of that has happened and it reared its ugly head once again how much would you, you feel would you feel better about them if they were able to trade for Ola Kamara because he's still being chopped I, I yeah, would I wouldn't feel worse gonna... about them. Uh, does that feel like the solution? Maybe. You really hit me on that one. 
I mean, he scored 15 or more goals like three or yeah. four times in his MLS career. He scored 19 to me, goals last year. To me, year. that's the Rapids way solution. Like, if you're looking for the Rapids to go f- spend five, six million dollars, like, why? I don't even know why you're looking in that sense. We all know that that's, it's just, it's not going to happen. That's not their model. That's not the way they operate. Even Porg Smith has said in this offseason when he's on his quest to get a number nine, like, that's not really in the plans. Like the flip side is you look at Philly and people yelled about that and then they went out and got a three million dollar striker and a six million dollar striker. Yeah, you know, I know we we've kind of like everybody sold quick on Julian Carranza because he was stuck buying Gonzalo Guayim, but this, but this that would have been the Rapids way striker. to bring him in. Not all on the end of his career. I don't know. We'll see what happens with the Rapids uh, and whether or not they are elite in the West, but I think they're easily a playoff team. LAFC Colorado, the first national TV game of the weekend. Univision Tudi on Twitter, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Charlie, let's talk Portland, New England. New England heading across country, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Big Fox, Fox Deportes on Saturday. The Twitter, uh, or excuse me, the Twitch show will lead into that one. What is your take on the state of the Revs? It's high. (laughs) It is high. I mean... (laughs) You, you need to bring in competition, right? Competition breeds, I think, success on the pitch. And I think for, for Adam Buxa, who uh, has not not made it a secret, he wants to play in Europe. You know, you get a taste of, of international football with Poland playing with Lewandowski. You know what your ceiling is and, and you crave that type of competition all the time. This is a big year for him. You're talking about World Cup year. You're talking about, you know, setting yourself up for a big money move. There's been interest, but to really shore up that interest, you have to have another strong performance this year. And I think when you when you sign Josie Altador, you're sending a message to both him and Gustavo Bo. If you don't perform, you will be off. And you don't want to come off the pitch and allow Josie the chance to claim that spot. Because if Josie stays healthy and this is like a, a redemption year for him, man, this could be something special. So I think when you when you talk about Sebastian Legette coming into the team, um, who who's, I guess, brought in to make up for the loss of Tejan Buchanan, that's a, that's a massive loss because you're talking about a, a real threat. North-South has the, the, the pace, can score goals for himself, but also create. You need to, to change the way you play. I think my only concern is how do you replace Matt Turner? You have you have you've had now probably six months to figure out what that plan is. You know, you, you have to bring in a strong goalkeeper to make up that difference. If they do, this is a team that's going to be competing for, for MLS Cup because Carlos Heel is top three best players in this league. No doubt. So uh, I think for, for this Revs team, it's continue to, to move forward. You hope has, Henry Kessler takes some steps forward. Andrew Farrell continues to be consistent. And Dewan Jones, for me, has made the biggest strides with this team. So as a left back, getting a national team call up, getting that experience, now he knows how he needs to improve. This is someone who, who's also on a lot of European clubs' radar. Chuck, Let me just fast forward you real quick. Well, I was going to ask if, real quick. Chuck, do you think that like winning the Supporters' Shield last year, do you think they'll be up in contention for that again? Or do you think this is more of like, we got Josie to help us try and take us over the top? Or with some of the changes that might happen during the season, whether Turner leaves or, um, you know, when he leaves or whatever is going to happen, do you think that that expectation is is a little bit lower than than it was last year as far as regular season? Yes, I, I think. Yes, regular season's great. They won the support show. Everyone knows the Revs are going for MLS Cup. That's what Bruce Arena was brought in for. Not it wasn't to compete for support show, although that's nice. And I'm sure I'm sure they're going to be playing to their very best and, and try and finish as high up the standings as you can. But the goal is MLS Cup, and that's what he's brought in. Omar Gonzalez, that, that's a piece for experience. He's not going to give you, you know, let's say 50, 60% of the games, right, in, as starts. This is a player who's going to bring that experience in the locker room. Josie Altador experience, Sebastian Legette experience. That's what this team needs. And I think he's done the, that part going into the year, and now it's all, it's all about staying healthy and, and keeping those performances consistent. I was going to say fast forward, and that was a great question, uh, Caitlin. I was wondering that myself. But fast forward to the summer. If Buxa is sold and they have an open DP spot and they have transfer fees for Adam Buxa, Tejan Buchanan, and Matt Turner, what do the Revs do? Do they go spend big, and where do you think they would spend? I don't think they spend big in the summer uh, uh, if Adam Buxa goes because I think it depends on Josie Altidore's health. If Josie can maintain his health and get into form and – 
it also comes down to does Josie have that that itch like to to play in a World Cup to to you know give it one more push because it's not like there's a a number of strikers doing it for the U.S. Men's National Team right now. You know, Ricardo Pepe after he's got his move, he's he struggled, and I think that's to be expected for a young player to go over and have kind of that kind of pressure and expectations in Europe. So you look at Sergeant Pepe. Uh, DK, these are all forwards who haven't done it yet for the U.S. Men's National Team. Maybe at times you 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 said, ah, that's that's the guy. But Josie Altador, if he has that that itch, that motivation to one stay healthy and perform, you don't necessarily have to go and spend in the summer. But you, you don't. Do, think, what I about think, wing? What about like a Tejon yes, replacement? I think you you if if a player comes available, you you spend the money, you spend the cash to go out and get someone who's a game changer in the midfield. Uh, how about the other side, Doyle? Portland Timbers hosting this game just as they hosted MLS Cup just a few short months ago. That didn't work out for them in PKs, of course. We saw Ronnie Dyla pumping out push-ups on their home turf. Mm-hmm. There are some question marks for them. Um, you know, Dave's favorite striker in the league, Felipe Mora, out with injury for a little while here. Uh, but Williamson coming back, Dave, so you got that side of things. You know, the positives be, and negatives for you. Don't hit a man what? while he's down. <laughs> Felipe Mora's injured. Get well soon. Feel better. God, Weavey, get out of my face. All right. All right. Doyle, what are the biggest question marks for you for the Timbers this year? Injuries and age. Uh, Felipe Mora, Eric Williamson, neither of those guys are going to be playing from the jump. Luis Mabiala and Dario Zuparic. Both, both to Parich, rather, both of those guys are injured as well. And then, of course, Sebastian Blanco. Now, Sebastian Blanco h- has gone out and said, um, you know, it, it hurt that the Timbers didn't sign me right away, uh, that my knee is fine. Uh, I, you know, they know the type of player I am and, and they, you know, should have trusted me. And so there's a little bit of bad blood there. And like, I get that, but I'm still concerned about the knee because it's not just Portland who didn't sign him. Like Boca Juniors looked at him and said, Ooh, no, I don't, I don't want that. And the difference for Portland last year, I mean, it all came down to Sebastian Blanco. When he played, they collected about 1.9 points per game, which is almost a supporter shield pace. When he didn't play, they collected about 0.9 points per game which is almost a wooden sh- a wooden spoon pace. That is just a massive on-off difference. The final, I think it was 18 games of the year, he played in 16 of them. That, this includes the playoffs. They were 13-3-2. and two. Like this, So the, the first half of the year, before he was in the lineup regularly, they were terrible. Um, that's a lot of guys in their mid-30s coming off of surgery or injuries uh, that are – are question marks. And so like anything feels possible for me for the Timbers uh, this year. Like you, you could tell me that they end up on 56 points and make it get healthy and make a, a push into MLS cup again. Or you could tell me that it just, it's too much. They fall apart. They end up with 35 points. They miss the playoffs. Uh, but either way, this weekend, I do not expect them to look like a good team because they're missing so many of their best. I players. echo everything Doyle said. And I would add to, They've lost Steve Clark, who statistically was a top five keeper last year. Yes. And they've yep. replaced it with no known quantity. So they might have a keeper on the club that I mean, we know the qu- we know the quantity that exactly. David Bingham so is. So of the known is not very good. Of the unknown, there yeah. is a mystery box. And it could be good, it could be great, but it's a question mark behind, as Doyle said, two aging center backs, two fullbacks who like to mainly attack when they can, and a lot of question marks in in the, the group in front of them, and I, I think that's a major worry. I'm sitting here thinking about how teams are going to approach this weekend, and I'm curious your perspective on that, Kalen. Like, what what is what is week one for players? Like, as fans, we've sort of been waiting and watching and trying to figure out what's going to happen, and we're all juiced up. Players have been grinding through preseason. Like, what are players thinking going into this week one? And teams, maybe older teams or teams traveling cross country. Like, how much does does week one matter to players? Like, what what space does it occupy? I mean, it matters a lot. I think you know the excitement and the pageantry and the celebrate uh, celebration of like playing in front of a packed stadium is something that I think, especially after COVID, guys uh, don't take for granted. Um, and you know, I think for everybody, it's like I was joking before about the like teams that are having these um, these moments that are like, oh no, we're in trouble. So it, it kind of depends on for each team because some teams are like, like if you're Charlotte, right? It's like. You're you're thinking like oh, you're the excite the all this excitement, but you don't have any real expectations necessarily coming in, um, or it's been set a little bit lower. Whereas like you want to go out and prove 
people wrong or other teams. Maybe it's your manager who's gone out and said, we need more signings. And from a player's perspective, if you're on San Jose or uh, Red Bull, you're like, really? What about me? Like, I've been in that position before, too, where you're hoping that to prove that you don't need to go sign another, you know, another winger or another striker or whatever it is. So um, that stuff is important. That said, you have to remember there's like a long way to go. And I think a lot of people, especially fans and media, put a ton of pressure on like week one as this like, uh, like, deciding thing of like decisive moment of is this team bad or is Miami actually back? Did the rebuild work? Chicago, same thing. Like what's the direction here? And so I think you have to kind of keep cooler heads because it's, uh, you know, MLS, it's like everybody is really in, in it for most all of the season towards the end, which is part of the excitement and leading up to like the final day of the season. But um, yeah, I don't know. And then just like paying off your hard work in preseason. Like you just want to get in that first lineup and there's something special about um, being a part of that first um, 11 on the team. Kalen, there's only one trophy What's that matters your, uh, in MLS and it's who will be at the top of the power rankings. And you set yourself, you exactly. establish yourself early in week one. If you're not in that top th- <laughs> tier, you're not getting in. And if you're not in, what was your season even about? That's like the opposite of what I tell guys that I, what I played with where young guys where I'd be like, I've I actually have played one more minutes in MLS without ever starting an opening day. Um, I someone like sent me the stat at some point, and but like I was like, all right, opening day. But I played in two MLS cups, uh, played a bunch of playoff minutes. And it's like I tend to tell guys like, don't worry so much about the kind of vanity of opening day starts. Wait to the end, you know, like push it push it to the back. But that's also because I was always hurt in the off season, and then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Charlie, what's your favorite uh, week one memory or opening day memory? Doesn't have to be MLS. It could be Scandinavia. It could be France. What sticks yeah. out? I, I would say in 2016, um, my wife got put uh, on on early bed rest in the hospital, and so you know her water broke. So the twins were, you know, that whole week leading up to the first game was in Houston. Um, you know, it was all this uncertainty. Were they going to be have to be born early or not? Uh, so they told me I could go, that she wasn't going to deliver. And it was three months early. Actually, it was, you know, 25 weeks. So uh, it, it was quite the scare. Went to Houston, started and scored. Um, and for me, that was a big, big moment. Although uh, you throw in the D.C. Uh, game in 2011, um, you know, that was, you know, coming back from, from a year and a half uh, off, you know, out of the game. Um, and kind of, kind of re redefining who I am as a player. That that was pretty special. Some decent week one memories for Charlie yeah. Davis. R- RFK, Jeez. good yeah. old RFK days. There's some yeah. some emotions flowing through you around that. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, let's switch to Sunday. We covered Saturday's national TV games. Uh, Atlanta sporting Kansas City. That's one of those cross conference matchups. 3 p.m. Eastern. Mercedes Benz. FS1. Fox Deportes. Doyle. What are you watching in this game? Just from a soccer standpoint if you're going to nerd out on this one what are you nerding out on there's a lot of different choices here but i think the big one for me is i want to see if gonzalo pineda has atlanta looking like sounders east you know he comes from that brian schmetzer coaching tree um and over the dozen or 15 games that he had uh, as manager at the end of last season they really were committed to to playing i think kind of a lower block and in transition rather than the sort of methodical buildup that atlanta fans had seen for two almost three years under frank de and then um, gabriel heinze uh so i'm i'm mostly interested in that structure that said i'm obviously interested in, in seeing how Joseph looks because he didn't look fully fit last year. He still scored a dozen goals. I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, if Tiago, Tiago Almada plays, uh, how he's going to look, if he could be more effective than Ezekiel Barco was. Not that that's a particularly high bar. Um, <laughs> Just the strays and, for Barco. From oh God, I'm so glad he's <laughs> gone. <laughs> and then the other thing on the other side for sporting, I want to see who's going to play at Demet. Um, and whether they can do the job, not just in, in of, of moving the game around and moving the ball around, but also of stopping transitions in the other direction. Because Sporting KC, for the past three or four years, they've been so vulnerable to any sort of direct play through the middle um, that it's it's really en- it's ended their season basically every single year. I think it's going to be Uri. All the word out of Kansas City is that uh, Jose Mari has not been that guy in preseason, that we're throwing it back to 2013 and sort of the heyday for Uri Rossell. So... Yeah, I think it's going to be Uri. We'll we'll see how that works out for him. Uh, what about for you, Chuck? Atlanta this year? 
What are you watching? Do you think Joseph's back? I think Joseph's back. I think he's, he's motivated. It, it takes time. What I think a lot of supporters don't understand, you know, if you, you, you do an ACL, um, you do you, you, Achilles, these injuries, even though you may have recovered and you're back on the pitch, it takes a full season to get back into the swing of, th- swing of things. Sometimes, it, you know, you, you have uh, atrophy in certain areas, deficiencies, and it takes a long time to get back into the, the swing of things with recovery and feeling normal. And so I think last year served Joseph Martinez uh, well because now this year he can get back to feeling at his best. You know, I think you didn't really get uh, the acceleration from Joseph last year. I think this year we'll start to see that from him. And he's surrounded with some 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 players. I think Tiago Almada will do uh, will really help him with with creating opportunities. The uh, last how about part the sporting that comes kid? back from yeah, here, I just I was just thinking about that because like I've done my ACL twice and like the last thing that comes back is that you can be out there and healthy, but it's that final bit of trust um, where you're not even thinking about it. And so, I mean, even in Joseph's without fully kind of unleashing himself, I think he had like nine or ten goals last year. Right. So it's like he he's but a lot of the goals were kind of turns in the box or a little bit different than the ones where we've seen in the past where he's like just throwing himself in cannonball wild, yeah. you know, positions. So um, I think that that does take time to kind of get your body underneath you and to really kind of get back to it. But um, I expect him to to be back in, and scoring a ton of goals this year. Well, look, we know there's nobody on this show that um, is more into sporting Kansas City, that supports Kansas City more, that believes in them more. Than uh, David Goss <laughs> this year, who's got an MVP uh, I was, candidate. I was going to say Kalen Carr. I thought Kalen got yeah. a got a Sporting Kansas City uh, tattoo at one point, didn't you? <laughs> We've got one on his back. T I D in old English. Uh, Dave, you've been all in, man. You, Johnny yeah. Russell for MVP might be the most uh, among many a shocking take on this show over the years. That might be the one that, that got me. And I took and I took the man in the golden boot draft. Yeah, I don't think I, I just want to be clear you on the history of this show. That was not one of the most shocking takes. I picked Ramon Apple to win Newcomer of the Year last year. I mean, that might yeah. not even be in our top five, uh, to be honest with you. Over under 58 points from last year. Um, Where are you going? I, I'm saying over, and and part of what I've said this whole time is, one, I think in the conversation that Charlie had about the Revs and I talked about with Colorado is – where does the regular season matter? SKC has always put in 100% to every game. They have been good at home. They care about where they... S- Other yeah, than League's sure. Cup. Well, Just that's why. Because that they're focused on the league. Yeah. That's uh, uh, that's good and point. on top good of point. that, I, I think you, you've seen Peter Vermees, who's been hesitant to use his substitutes. He's gone out and he's brought in three U20, three, three U22 signings, um, almost all in positions where... They're not replacements. They're additions to depth. uh, Felipe Hernandez available to you again this year. Uh, You had improvements from Duke last year to show that he can give you minutes, uh, as well as a couple of MLS veteran signings like the Ben Sweats of the world that have come into this team. So I think you're looking at a team that has more depth, that has that high-end talent, and they didn't have Alan Polito last year either. So now they've actually brought in a center forward to fill a spot that was in absence last year. And I think this is a team, I'm not picking them to win MLS Cup, but I think they'll be highly competitive and they'll be high in the Western Conference over the course of the regular season. Am I the only one who's worried about the Demid thing? Like, if, like Ori Russell's a fine player. If yeah, Ori Russell he... is, is starting yeah, 30 games for you, a defensive midfielder yeah. in 2022, as a, as, a single, as a single pivot, Right, like as a as a you have to cover more ground, single pivot, and Rogers thirty five, and not doing the superhuman Roger stuff that he was doing. You know, even all of that ago. is very worrying to me. Um, but I think Ismat Marine, okay. if he's healthy, gives you an improvement at center back, as well as pick every other team in the West, and you can start to talk about the question marks. Like none of these teams are perfect. Maybe Seattle, but mm. so yeah, there's always going to be something coming into the season. Did he just win oh, Seattle perfect? Yeah. No, he said, but yeah. he hit it with a mm afterwards. Okay. So there's an mm. I heard I, I heard a yippee <laughs> from Anders in the back. <laughs> uh, Atlanta United sporting Kansas City, FS1, Fox Deportes, 3 p.m. Eastern on Sunday for Mercedes Benz. Galaxy New York City at five. This is a 
you know, it's a derby match, of course, in L.A. So that's a Dignity Health Sports Park, ESPN, ESPN Deportes. I just want to throw out a quote that just dropped here. We've had some good ones. This is from NYCFC CEO yeah. Brad Sims. Uh, you know, the two games we've had dude wipes on our sleeves, we've had two clean sheets. <laughs> which I just uh, really, uh, truly, truly enjoyed that one. Uh, <laughs> we'll start, let's, let's start with the Galaxy, Kalen. Uh, Douglas Costa is going to be available for this one. His visa came through, so we'll see what, what he provides. What do you think he will provide, and what are you most interested in the Galaxy? Because if you go back, and uh, Alicia Rodriguez had a thread about this, and I had been thinking this for a while, like, Douglas Costa is not exactly a full season, crazy goal assist contribution production type of guy over his career. He's like a high end mystery box type of guy where you watch a game on a Wednesday, maybe in CCL for Bayern, and you're like, this dude could beat anybody in the world. And then there's not a ton other times for him. What do you think he'll be? And what are you, uh, what are you thinking about when you think LA Galaxy these days? I mean, the quality is there, but yeah, I, I was a little surprised by that signing. It doesn't it didn't really necessarily fit into the way I think of how the Galaxy go out into the market, but it sounded like kind of a strange situation with his club team and uh, and like contract status where I think just an opportunity appeared. I, I'm more interested when I think of the Galaxy, I'm more interested in thinking about um, not a specific player, but um, the manager with Vanny. And I think when we saw last year was glimpses of what he can do with the team and the way that they were able to, at least through the first part of the season, um, they were one of the surprises of the year that we thought that like, you know, Chicharito was scoring goals and they were getting, you know, I think near the top of the Western Conference and the top three places. And it seemed almost surely like he was headed towards maybe coach of the year and they were going to be in the playoffs. And then suddenly the defensive frailties came back and, uh, you know, Chicharito was missing. They tried to sustain the effort during that time. But then overall, it really was the sort of failure in the back that was uh, let themselves down, which is sort of the galaxy story over the past years. And I think what we learned from this was that there's no skipping steps in building a team. And I think we thought that Vanny could potentially maybe jump a couple places because he's got the Galaxy infrastructure and some cash behind him and all that. But when you build, it really takes years. And you even look back to his TFC time that first year, I think it was he came in as an interim at the end. The next year, I think um, it was better. They got into the playoffs, I think, but lost Drag to uh, yeah. Montreal, like in a kind of a bad way in that first match. I was at that one up in, in Montreal. And then the next year, it's like you really start to see it moving forward. And so I like some of the moves they have. Like, you know, they added uh, Marquis Delgado, right, who's he knows super well. He's gotten a lot of guys that know his system in the past, and that's been um, really helpful. Rivellison, I think, in that D-mid position can help protect that back line. They're expecting a lot, I think, from Koulibaly. Um, you, you know, I think Cabral, we – some of us, did we pick him, put him on the bounce back, the David Goss Oh, yeah, theorem? we did. You better okay. believe he's we did. Pick. We were all over he's that. A, he's my David Goss theorem pick. Yeah, yeah okay. they don't need Douglas Costa to produce because they got Cabral. That's the whole thing, right? Like, often. he's going <laughs> to... And then I think for me, Araujo is, is I think, going to have a really, really big year. Um, you know, already such a big part of their attack and servicing... Uh, Chicharito getting up and down that right flank. So, and the way that Vanny's used outside backs in the past, when you look at Beta Shore, you look at uh, Justin Morrow. So, I, I, I'm interested, but they can't just do it in this like three two way all season. They need to find other ways um, to be, to win matches that are like two to one. You know, I would even take that because <laughs> uh, going so into this, going, like, we need shutouts. Uh, we're not going for shutouts. I mean, like. just I'm just saying, like, they have to find different ways to win. And but I, I, I do believe in Vanny. And when you look at those progressions, I think last year they learned they couldn't skip a step. But um, I think they'll take another step forward this year. How many goals for Chicharito, Charlie? <sighs> I'll say go, a big number. Say a big number. Say a big yeah, number. I'm gonna go 18. That's not a big enough number. Mm -hmm. I, need, 18, I need more. It's 18 to 21. I think what what would have, be yeah. like? What would be? Eight, what's wait, the, what's eight, the line for a good season or a not good enough season from Chicharito? If I, I would say 20 goals. 20 goals. Yep. It's 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 almost That's, more about the the minutes he plays than about the goals. Because like, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're number nine, you want to put the ball in the back of the net, but LA were just so much more dangerous overall when he was on the field because obviously first and foremost he's a great goal scorer but he's so great off the ball he just opens up gaps for everyone else to exploit so if he has I 
if I'm a Galaxy fan, I would almost rather have him 16 goals in 2,500 minutes than 18 goals in 1,800 minutes. I just I want him out there as often as possible because even what he's one of those rare players who even without ever touching the ball, he elevates everybody else in that attack. Seems well, like an emotional bellwether too for them. You know, we're talking about sure. sort of guys like Ace Ace or Jermaine, et cetera, like elevating a team. It just seemed like when he was in the match there was a different sort of belief and a different... Like, the vibes were immaculate, so to speak. Like, it, it just changed the way they thought about themselves. Uh, obviously, I want to see that. He's my number one <laughs> overall golden boot pick. How about Tati, Charlie? Speaking of golden boot winners... Yes. Ta- for me, Tati is one of the most complete players in Major League Soccer. And New York City FC have depth. Depth for days. Um, when you look at the attack, I think this is going to be a big season for, for Tylus Magno. I think seeing how he finished last year, he understands the league, he understands his team. This could be a, a, a huge year for him. Tiago Andrade is another player who, who showed some bits and flashes. Um, Sa- Santi Rodriguez had a phenomenal end to the season last year. So you, you look at some of those players who are going to be providing opportunities for Castellanos, and Castellanos moves very well. It gets him between the lines, good first touch. He can combine well. And Max Morales, as long as he stays healthy, because he's, he's getting towards the, the end of his career, um, man, he's going to ha- continue to have opportunities. And when you're playing for a contract, when you know all these teams are looking at at you and, and there's a, a number of interests, not only in South America, but in Europe, to continue to build off of that, and he's come he's come with the right attitude because teams have come and I've seen it go work the other way where you're hoping for a move, you're looking for it, New York City FC or your club says no, and then you're like, ah, you go into kind of like a... Uh, uh, a bad attitude, right? And and now the performances show that bad attitude. He just continues to work. And it looks like he, he the team enjoys him on the field. He gets the most out of the players around him. So Castellanos, as long as he's with this team, they're going to be one of the top teams to beat. Dave, he's pulling up the shorts. You see that? He's showing off the thighs. He's hey, getting the tuck. Him. He wants that money, noticed? baby. That's the you know didn't work out that well in MLS for Jefferson or Jefferson Soteldo, but it's gonna <laughs> I feel like it's gonna work out for Tati. Tyus Magno last night, uh, by the way, in CCL looked really really good. And uh, look, I know it's Santos y Guapiles. It's a it's an opponent that maybe is not going to be at the same level they face week to week. But he looked super active, really he, strong on the ball. Making he looks good like decisions. he'll lead the league in expected goals. Goals becomes more questionable, but the XG is going to be high. Very high. Tiago to the end line. That's fun as well. All right. Those are your national TV games starting on Saturday, of course, with LAFC Colorado on Univision Tudian and Twitter in English, Portland, New England uh, on Big Fox, FS1 on Sunday, Atlanta, Kansas City, and then LA Galaxy, New York City on ESPN to finish off the national TV slate on Sunday as well. ESPN Plus Games of the Week. Doyle, get us started. Sell us. What are you selling us on? Uh, Philly versus Minnesota because I think these are two very good teams. Um, top five teams certainly in their respective conferences, two teams that uh, made the playoffs over the past couple of years. For Philadelphia, I think the Julian Carranza deal is like one of the most fascinating deals in MLS history because like he's a young DP who they got on, on a loan from another MLS team. And my understanding of it is it, if he, no matter how well he performs, he could score 25 goals and – Philly just have a purchase option. That's it. They don't have to give the whole farm to to Miami to get this guy permanently. And he's a six million. Like they paid six million dollars for him a couple of years ago. He he was in the Argentinian youth national team picture a couple of years ago. This is not the type of talent that the union usually have access to. And from everything I have heard, he's been really really good in preseason. So I'm very curious to see how that looks. I'm I'm curious to see how. Obviously, the the homegrown pipeline for the union looks. And then on the flip side, two things for this Minnesota United team. Adrian Heath has wanted to have Luis Amaria or a striker like him in the starting lineup since day one. He had him for a really brief moment in 2020, and he liked him so much that he's brought him back now in 2022. We know that for years he was trying to build, trying to get and then build around Babelo Reynoso. So those two guys together in attack. Um, like this is Adrian Heath's team now. 
We are we are going to see what he has wanted to build since 2017. Like it is finally there between those two guys and Fragapane uh, and Robin Lud. And then behind them, last year, like it, when Hassani Dotson played as one of the double pivots in that four two three one, like it, Minnesota were over two points per game. It's a small sample size. There's only about a dozen games. And we know that Dotson has bounced around. I think he's played five different positions in his young. Well, he seems to be the starting number eight now. It seems to be his job. So I'm really curious to see if he can, you know, come out from day one and play like a veteran because he is a veteran now and, you know, marshal the midfield against in Philadelphia, a very, very difficult team to play against. Curious to see, by the way, if Amaria pays his debts. Is he a, a Lannister, so to speak? I mean, goals. Adrian came out and said, look, yeah. you owe us 25, bro. You owe us yeah. 25. You can't be making those promises and not paying up. Charlie, what are you watching on ESPN Plus? I'm going to watch the Columbus Crew versus Vancouver Whitecaps. Uh, the Crew, we're talking about the 2020 uh, MLS Cup champions. 2021, they don't make the playoffs. This is a massive year. You, you have Lucas Zellerayan, who we, we all know is one of the most gifted players in this league, attacking midfielder. You have to produce. This team needs to be better with some, some of the players that they have. And so when I'm looking at them on 16th in the power rankings versus Vancouver, who's 15, and you have Vanny Sartini, who has done a tremendous job with, with this Vancouver. And now you're starting from scratch. So... For me, this is a, a game that I really want to see um, who who steps up and who starts off on the right foot. Uh, Brian White might not play in this game, which is heartbreaking for all of us who love us some Brian White. Uh, Kalen, how about you? Where are you going? I'm going to go down to Miami, um, but I'm going to be watching more uh, for the fire. And uh, I, I just think like probably one of the best off seasons I can remember – Maybe ever <laughs> the club like with the uh the yeah shout out to Doyle our uh, real life Igwe Li- lifelong lifelong <laughs> Inter Miami fan. Sorry, I mean sorry, come Doyle on, you, is wearing the new pink kit by the way, which fittingly Gonzalo Iain joins us here for an interview. Uh, <laughs> he, has, he, has back, he has Beckham on the back though. He has on the back. Take that hat position. off. Take that hat off again so I can screenshot that. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, uh, but no, just seeing, headline Gonzalo Iain joins the, the board. <laughs> <laughs> I am really interested to see the Stoke City matchup between Shawcross and Shakiri going at it. Um, no, uh, I'm I'm really interested to see Ezra's system. Um, you know, it's the first time as a head coach, and um, you know has been a part of some really top systems in the past. But similar to the way that we talked about um, with like the uh, Sounders coaching tree and seeing if it's going to be a little bit similar or different or some of the other influences he's had throughout his career. So I want to see what that looks like, but just that whole retooled attack and Shakiri, I think will be the center of it. And uh, as far as like MLS newcomers of the year, it would be like a shock to me if he doesn't win it uh, in in my opinion. And I think he has actually a lot more of uh, being like somebody that could, if he's on, he can challenge for MVP. Like he can be that good for the fire. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to see what this new fire team looks like um, from a lot of different levels. So, um, and I know Inter Miami has made a bunch of changes, but I, I'm looking at it more from the fire perspective. All right, the most notable uh, Charlotte FC follower hitting the road with them just get week in week out. David Goss, uh, well, what on earth could I you be looking for? I want to start with breaking to? news that I think Kalen will enjoy quite a lot which is Steve Goff saying that Brad Smith has announced he is renting Paul Ariola's home as Paul Ariola has been traded to FC Dallas. I know Kalen loves his MLS real estate, so I just... Wait, who's the realtor there? Isn't um, yeah, is it Russell Knauss? Uh, yeah, yeah. is he going to cut deal? on that? Is he going to percentage don't a little bit? I don't know. The, I, I, this is my promise. I will go and cover this game. And I will get you guys the information that that you so desire. Uh, It's an expansion team, right? It's an unknown. And obviously, we know the comments from the coach for Charlotte. Uh, But you're looking at a player in Jordan Alcivar who there's a ton of excitement around the world about his talents and what he could be. There's a lot of international players that have not played in MLS on this Charlotte roster. Historically, that hasn't always worked out for teams, but that's not a guarantee that it won't. And so I think there's a lot of question marks that you're going to see be answered. And 
there's always that level of excitement. I mean, you're still an FC Cincinnati fan because of that March that one time. Like, there's always that excitement those first few weeks. And I think Charlotte's going to have that. And can that spur them into maybe some early results and some early energy? And then on the flip side with DC, I'm excited about the addition of Estrada and how he fits. Not all the pieces are healthy and together yet. And obviously, you've got a DP coming in this summer. So we won't know exactly what the team looks like. But who is DC? under Losada. They've not made a ton of additions. Uh, they've had some big subtractions. And what is that next step in the development of that club? So there's a lot of question marks on both sides, which makes it intriguing. All right, Seattle-Nashville uh, is an easy one for me. That's the final w- uh, game of the weekend on ESPN+. Plus. Fortunately for all of us, at 8 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, Seattle hosting Nashville, who do not get to ease their way into the Western Conference. They only played two Western Conference games all of last year, and they were early on. I think it was against – I had it written down here. I think it was against RSL in, uh, in Austin. It was a draw and a win. And they actually were pretty good against the West in their first season in 2020. You remember it was, so, it was strange. The schedule was all over the place. They played Dallas a bunch of times because neither of them were in the MLS is back tournament, but they don't get to ease in. You don't get like a trip to Texas. You go straight to Seattle. Seattle will have two games under their belt, and again, knock on wood over and over, we assume they'll be through CCL. Uh, So I'm super interested in that one. We have a question here from Teflon on Twitter. Was there an over-under for Nashville ties this year? I don't think we did that one. They had 18 (laughs) last year. Do we think they'll... Under well, I didn't give you a number. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a number for you. Like, of course, it's under on eighteen, Charlie. It have to, it would have to be, I assume. Uh, what 11, if I said eleven's got to be the number? I what if know. I said it at eleven and a half? I don't know. I for me, I might go over because they're opening a mm-hmm. stadium this year, right? And so they're doing this long road trip yep. to start the season. And played for a I point know, till May. I, yeah, I've done this twice where we've opened stadiums and gone on that road trip. And the goal is just to like stack points, just stack points on top of points and get home and then like win your home games. And so I think like when you're just on the road, living on the West Coast, just kind of bouncing around, um, they know how to do that, right? That, that's the like formula for them. It's not going to be, it's just muscle memory to be able to play in those types of matches. So I actually think like I, I'm trying to remember how long I think I did like eight games one year or 10 games another. I think 10 was the most I've ever done on the road um, in a row. I think they might have something similar to that. So if you get like, you know, you sneak one, you lose a couple. I I could see like half of that being eaten up by, by, you know, the end of that road trip. And then, you know, the second half of the year, you know how it goes. Sometimes things get tight as the season goes on. So I'm, I'm going to smash the over on that one, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for Nashville. Um, they, they were, you know, if you, if they didn't know how to lose. Ultimately, you know, I think that they found themselves in penalties in those really tight games in the playoff and lost to Andre Blake. Um, and that's kind of the game you play when, it, when you end up in those situations. But um, I think it's not a bad formula for them. Nobody had fewer losses in MLS last year. Four. The Revs had five. Second best goal differential in MLS last year. Only two behind the Revs at plus 22 as well. They didn't lose at home, but they had nine draws at home. That's what they got to reverse this year. And, of course, they had nine draws on the road as well. If it was 11 and a half, Teflon, I, I would hit the over on that as well. I think you made a great point on the road trip, Kalen. All right, let's get to the inaugural trophy draft. We did our golden boot draft, which people found absolutely idiotic uh, as well as entertaining. And I, I agree with that take. I, I almost want to do I almost want to do five more rounds on Monday after we see who's like in lineups in week one. Maybe we'll do that on Monday's extra time. But the MLS Cup odds from BetMGM are out. I uh, had a good time looking at those. Both they and 538 love LAFC. No surprises there. For MLS Cup winner, you have three teams at plus 700. Dave Quick, what does uh, that, that mean? That means that if you bet 25 cents, you win $500. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what that means. That's, That's not, what, not that what that means. That's <laughs> all everybody knows. It's if you bet. Let's see. If you bet a that dollar, you win. Charlie gives me five dollars. Right? I'll no, no, flip it and get him fifteen <laughs> within one week. And if you give it to me over five k, I guarantee the money. Embarrassing. It's it's if you bet one dollar, you would win seven. Correct. Okay, got it. Well, LAFC plus seven hundred, New England plus seven hundred, and the Sounders plus seven hundred. New York City FC just plus a thousand. Sporting Kansas City at plus twelve hundred. Then Atlanta United, Rapids, the Galaxy, and the Union all at plus six hundred. You can go check it out at BetMGM. Uh, the one that I think is like super disrespectful is Vancouver Whitecaps down here at plus sixty six hundred. And that is like that. That's second. That's the same as Charlotte FC, whose coach <laughs> said that they were screwed and have never played an MLS game. Like that is. 
That's disrespectful. Andiamo. I'm not about that. But let's get into the uh, the. Yeah, Andiamo. Maybe if you're if you're laying it down on him. Inaugural trophy draft. Here it goes. Our order is this. We we had Anders pick a random number between one and twenty eight, the number of teams in the league, and then whoever was closest got the first pick. Charlie picked <laughs> the number nine. Wait, which but should, Anders su- al- surprised nobody. So stupid. I, Anders also chose the number based on the trophies that Seattle has, right? Correct. Well, no, not even know. that they have the trophies no. that he expects them to win this year. He oh, picked wow. the number five okay. for the trophies he expects expects them to win, which, yes, was uh, predictably stupid. Uh, But Charlie picked number nine, which was also predictable, and he won it with the number nine. Dave, you were second in this list. Uh, Doyle is third. I'm fourth. Kalen is fifth. Anders says that we are doing... uh, that we're doing the snake once again to keep fair. I would fair. also tr- like to just add that Goss chose 11 because that's the number he plays with. He's like a... Chalk like a on the Omar. boot, winger. Whip it in. Good curve on the cross. Always creating opportunities. <laughs> Want it 1v1. <laughs> oh, man, we have Gonzalo. I know we have Phil Neville on the show. What a day it is on Extra is Time. This worst, is, w- this is, is the worst wonderful. English accent I've ever heard in my And this is a show yeah. that's seen some really bad accents over the years. <laughs> I got to tell you. So CCL is in play. MLS Cup is in play. Supporter Shield is in play. U.S. Open Cup is in play. Canadian Championship in play. Campeones Cup in play. Leagues Cup in play. And then... The twist we mentioned at the top, the wooden spoon counts as a trophy. Mm. So we'll see, it's like almost drafting a kicker <laughs> or defense in, uh, in you know, your fantasy football draft. Like, when do people switch it up? And they're like, ooh, we got a middle ground here, and I'm going spoon. Can we also so those are the trophies. Alternately known as the Copa de Kicker. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> From Houston's oh, own. Oh, oh wow. man. <laughs> uh, anybody want to make a hell is real joke here? Or? Oh, wow. No. Uh, we're going for the it's four peat. when you talk about hell is <laughs> yeah, real. Cincinnati going for the four peat this year. Oh. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna have we're each gonna take five picks here. Uh, that way, we each have five teams, and then the remaining three picks are gonna be given to Anders. So he's gonna get the leftovers, and we'll see if the leftovers can beat the rest of us who are doing this intentionally. Uh, we start with the number one overall pick, Charlie Davies. Who do you take, Charlie? I take with the number one pick. Damn it. The Seattle Sounders. Oh, I thought he Seattle would Sounders. definitely so take he's got the rest. Some CCL. I thought there was no way. <laughs> I, I gotta say, With I think the that's, there's a way. I think that that was the incorrect number one overall pick, but still a good pick, Charlie. I don't think you're gonna regret the Seattle Sounders number one overall. Uh, yeah, they're they're, they're gonna be in it for uh, CCL potentially to be on Motagua, MLS Cup, of course, Supporters Shield, and U.S. Open Cup. So you got some some plays going there, Dave. Who are you taking uh, number I two? I am putting overall? it in the field. I am willing to trade the number two overall pick for assets. Is anyone <laughs> interested? <laughs> I I would Man. trade you both the fourth pick and the fifth and the seventh pick okay. for your second overall and then I get, choice. And right then now. I get to swap my other Done. pick in too. Uh, oh, you're, you're gonna have four teams my, and I'm gonna have six two teams? picks. Okay, done. Correct. I officially trade. Oh, wow. In wow. in. In, NYCFC is my choice. Wow. It, by far the obvious pick. They're in Campione's yeah. Cup. They're already in a final. I stole that from you. Yes. Okay. Weeby takes that one. Nice. Good for me. All right, Doyle, you're up. Uh, yeah. Like I. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was I like a it. great kind for me. I'm kind of oh. shook by that. What the hell just <laughs> happened? <laughs> uh, um, uh, I, I Dave's I got, got the it. odds. He's got the odds in Bro, numbers. I'm stacking I'm squads. I'm a right. teams guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I got to I got to go with the Revs. I, you know, they they don't have the two extra competitions like like NYCFC does, but they they do have one extra competition uh in, in given the CCL and look, Bruce has won more than a title a year on average during his uh, his coaching career. So, uh it stands a good reason he's he's going to he's going to win something this year. Yeah, that's right. Dave, you're up. Uh you have the fourth um, pick. So, I will take Hmm. So all, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. I will take. Uh, oof. No, no, no. Time out here, no. like super. I'm struggling no, with like, everything that's happening. <laughs> Seriously, he's gonna go with Charlotte. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just, a, just, <laughs> just a spoon, spoon uh, pick off the top, huh? Uh, yeah, I will take the Philadelphia Union. I like that one. That's a good one. 
Okay. Dave takes the union. Uh, they, have, you know, look, maybe this is the year in Open Cup for them as well. They've been on the brink so many times. We've seen the heartbreak in person. Maybe this is their year. Uh, they have a shield recently. MLS Cup, get over the hump. Kalen, you've got back-to-back picks here. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. I, I don't like being at the end for this reason. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go with um, Kansas City. Okay. Sporting uh, KC. Peter Vermees, he's going for trophies. And then I'm going to go a little bit off the beaten path here. RSL. I'm, no, I'm going to take Montreal, Whoa. I think. I'm going to yeah. take Montreal. Yep. Oh, dang. I was, if I had my seventh pick, Montreal would probably be mine it, for both same. Canadian Championship and, and CCL potential same. there. Yeah, that's, a, that's a sneaky pick there. I like that one. Plus, they're going to be fun to root for. Yeah. Like you're not gonna ever regret being like I'm I'm pulling with Wilfred and the boys. Like that that's what's up. All right, well, Dave, you know, I, part of me is regretting the NYCFC pick, but you know, there's not that many trophies available, so I, I still feel good about my trade. We'll see how it pays off in the future. So now you I have, have this the seventh pick, overall pick here. And then I wait for Doyle and then I go again. You have this and then at you're back. And then it's start, two okay. Charlie uh, Davies and you're back again. At what point do we all just start targeting <laughs> wooden spoon? Is the question. I know I, that, there's gonna come a time here take... pretty soon, I think. I will take Atlanta United. Okay. Good choice. I like that choice. Uh, you're up, Doyle. You're on the clock. Okay. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Toronto FC. All right. That's another good, uh, good Canadian championship play. Mm-hmm. All right. I believe, Dave, you're back on the clock here with both the Union and Atlanta Nashville. United in your squad. No. Okay. All right. Nashville. Uh, they're they're a good choice there. Okay, Charlie, you're back to back here. Yeah. Uh, you, you have uh, you have Seattle. Uh, yeah. So, but you're gonna up it to three now. Yep. I'm gonna go. Galaxy. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Hollywood. I like that a lot. Yeah, I can't believe LAFC lasted this long, to be honest with you. That's going to be a real shock to the listeners out there, uh, that LAFC went all the way down this far in the uh, in the inaugural trophy draft. And Dave, Hollywood you're back, Charlie. man. Hollywood this Charlie. Is wor- Dave, this is working out pretty well I'm, for I'm, you. I'm feeling so, pretty good. That's all I'm Currently in your squad, Union, Atlanta, as well as Nashville. I'm going to go with Vancouver. Uh, it, it, it bears the reason that the Canadian clubs come off quickly here. So that, that makes sense. And Doyle, now you're up. And we're sort of at a transition moment, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 me. Don't, don't try to jump into my head. Uh, it turns out that we're at a transition moment right here. Um. Oh, man. Whoever I pick right here, that fan base is just going to be livid. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm wearing the kit, man. Inter-Miami. Miami. Is my, is my pick. Inter-Miami. Okay, so here's the thing. You went, that, That's a spoon choice, I assume. Yeah. But the spoon, if you're picking on spoon, you're really going for just one trophy point there. You assume, unless they, you know, maybe they're going to make an I Open mean, the Cup run. I mean, the U.S. Open Cup I miracle disagree. run. Yeah, you know? DC That's, United. I'm yeah, it's, it's, it's not. It's not a bad pick. That it's DC United pick. spoon and Open Cup was legendary. That's right. Oh, that I was they there. Did the, the I was double. there in 2013. Yeah. They did the. Du- not many teams do the double. Um, I'm gonna go for the mind games. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Minnesota United just so That's I have to. Pick. I have to root for. For the loons, I think. I think I got to go that route here. And, and you know, they got a chance. They got a chance to pick up some trophies across all fronts if things click. So uh, I'm with you now, loons fans. This is not an Adrian Heath beef pick. This is it's me. And, we're all together in this on this boat. All right. Uh, Kalen, you're back to back here. Wait, who did Goss take Whoa, again? Dude. I'm like blanking now. Vancouver. Back up, Vancouver. bro. Don't, okay. don't focus on me so much. Okay. Think of your okay. own squads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair. Fair. Um, I'm going to take. Uh, Salt Lake. Okay. And I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Cincinnati. Go. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that, that means cup. that that was for the my open pick cup. Too. Yeah, for the open cup. So I'm up next. RSL Cincinnati off the board. 
Um, uh, I know where uh, I'm going. Now. So do I go? Do I go spoon? That's the question I got to ask myself here. Uh, I'm not going to go spoon. I'm going to go Orlando City with Poppy. Mm. Um, I think I think I will enjoy rooting for them, and and that's part of it for me. Is so that I, an I'm not for. It could be. It could be. Uh, you know, they're, they're middle of the pack on that one on, as far as BetMGM, but I, I feel okay. So now we have Doyle, Dave, two Charlie Davies picks, Do- uh, Dave again, Doyle, and then myself and Kalen to finish off our draft, and we'll give the leftovers <laughs> to Anders. Uh, Doyle, what do you got? Uh, I don't know. I'm scrolling through trying to figure out who's left. Let's see. Uh, I don't want to. I, I feel like I, I don't want to play the mind games with you. So you got so ra- to. The rapids are the rapids are still left, right? They are. Nobody's they are picked available. the rapids. Correct. Um, let's see. I can confirm that. <laughs> you could you, for funsies. You could go San Jose. Yeah, I could go San Jose, but I'm not going to. You could go uh, the Red Bulls, but then MLS Cup is out. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Sh- Chicago oh, still about. Yeah, Chicago. I'm, I'm thinking of as, as well. Yeah. You know what? Chicago has a Houston, glorious U.S. Open. Chicago has a glorious U.S. Open Cup history, uh, and I think uh, Jordan Shakiri is going to bring a U.S. Open Cup back. Hell yeah! To the Windy City. I'm Let's going go. with the Chicago Fire, baby. I love that. Pick. A team with a, a team with a crest that good. Yep. deserves to win a championship that is that is just an absolutely gorgeous logo that they came up with after the previous one which was not so great uh so dave that. you're up union atlanta nashville and vancouver for you you will columbus. add a fifth team who is that fifth team columbus okay charlie back-to-back picks what do we have for canadian teams nothing you can take cavalry pacific the or yeah. halifax Forge yeah, FC. Yeah, yeah, Forge, Forge is available. Yeah, you could. Okay, uh, we're gonna go Dallas. All right. Now you're a big Dallas guy this year. That feels that feels and, feels good. Yeah, it feels like open cup possibility there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm gonna go San Jose. Okay. San Jose chaos. Dave, here you are. If I'm being honest. I'm not totally sure who's left on the board. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going with Austin. Austin. Austin's there. Houston's there. Okay, Austin is Dave's pick. Matt, you've got a pick here. Your final pick. Is Charlotte still available? No. <laughs> no comment. Yes. Yeah. Charlotte's yeah. No. Charlotte FC. Okay. Charlotte's available. Houston are available. Uh who else is available? Red Bulls are available. I guess you got You go. got to pick that. You got to pick the Red Bulls after you I guess win I, MLS I guess, Cup. I know. I guess I am going to go Red Bulls, and if they win yeah. MLS Cup, it'll be like the most glorious moment of my life. Kalen, it's uh, it's it's you now. Okay. Um, Did we forget yeah, anybody? Like, I feel so like we have, we're running out of teams here. Did someone take Houston SKC? Would a, Houston would be a sentimental pick. Okay. Uh, yes, Kalen did. Yeah. That was my first <laughs> pick. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Portland, uh, I don't think anybody's taking Portland. Oh, it's Portland. Portland's Portland, San I Jose. I should leave them for Anders. <laughs> Can we make a pact? Can we make a pact that we're leaving the Timbers for Anders yeah. right now? Yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. allowed to take the Timbers. I'll pass. I'll pass. <laughs> Um, can I pass entirely on no, those? You could pass. Yeah, you could. You could. You could. You could. Bruce Arena, LA Galaxy, Super Draft this one. <laughs> you could do that. I'm just kidding. DC are available. Oh no, no, so it's DC, yeah, yeah, San Jose. I'm gonna pick. Oh, DC no, San Jose got taken. I'm gonna take. Houston and Portland are all available right now. I'm going to take I, Houston a... getting their second U.S. Open Cup in club history and Ache Ache lifting it at the end of the – Wow. The of the That's good. That's good. I, I, don't know who, I don't know who we're missing here, but I, I think we have D.C. and Portland left on my list, and I don't know Colorado. Who... Nobody's taking Colorado. Oh, my God. Nobody took Colorado. That was probably was it? a huge, huge mistake. All right. There's your inaugural trophy draft. I don't know. That's a good one. To, that's a good one to give Anders. He's got a good chance on that one. And then you know the Timbers go to finals, and uh, he'll have to root for the Timbers. And then DC United. So that's fun stuff. All right, mailbag four one two zero six zero MLS extra time at MLSsoccer.com. dot com. We will put out our golden boot list as well as our trophy list, and let you vote on who we think uh, who you think is going to get the best of this. Should make it a interesting season to have a rooting interest in that sense. Uh, also, uh, extra time at MLSsoccer dot com for the mailbag. Uh, Neymar says he wants to come to MLS uh, mostly because there's a long break and he can go to Carnival. <laughs> 
football and celebrate his uh, sister's birthday. What do we right. think about that? That that second part I added, he didn't actually say that except for the break part. <laughs> it's implicit in everything I, he I says. I made an assumption there. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the contrarian view that I would personally love to see Neymar in MLS. Like, it's not contrarian. At that's all. contrarian. Who wouldn't, I, who wouldn't, who wouldn't, who wouldn't love, love to see, to see that? Neymar? Oh, <laughs> I felt like everybody has, like, especially since these comments come out, have been like, ah, we don't need you. Like, don't come here. Don't do this. Don't do that. Yeah, I, I would I would be like, no, sign Neymar. Yeah, yeah <laughs> welcome. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to MLS Neymar. Like, can we come to Carnival with you? Like, Bring what, it. Like, what, you need a vacation? We... Have, yeah, take like... a couple days off here and there if you need it. Like, <laughs> like, we're all cool. We need more entertainers in this league in personality, but you, Neymar, you It is one of those classic moments where Neymar yes, sort Neymar. of also was like, oh, I want to prolong my career and this season's shorter. It's like, yeah, enjoy those flights to Vancouver from Miami and... <laughs> Well, yeah, Julian yeah. Julian Gressel literally tweeted. Which, like, by the way, you know Gressel's going to end up on yeah, the team enjoy, name. Enjoy song, enjoy all that. They're going to be on the right wing together. <laughs> <laughs> you can give him some good hints on how to uh, how to keep those legs fresh. Uh, real quick, what's your favorite 2022 <laughs> jersey of the season? MLS Soccer or MLS Store.com for all the new jerseys. What's like number one on Marble. the list? You know I'm going to go Canadian. <laughs> all right, really the good. countertop kit from... Uh, from uh, I like CF the, Montreal. I like the one Charlie's wearing. The Caps always have such a great jersey. And the blue one's the new one this year. The white one's from last year. But the stripes, it, it's classic. Yeah. It feels old school. But I, I love the blue one as well. The Union's, the union's new jersey is, is pretty. I mean, it's, it's very similar to NYCFC's last NYCFC year. NYCFC like, this year really with really the cool. lightning bolt yeah, thing. Right. I appreciate clubs trying stuff. Yeah, I, I I appreciate them trying stuff. I don't I'm personally gonna... love the jersey, but they they did try on that one. Yeah. I like the I like the orange. I think the addition of the orange in New York City colors is good. The one that snuck up on me actually is the white San Jose kit. Actually, um, it wasn't the one that I like. The side panel. Yeah, that it didn't like jump out right away. Um, but the more I looked at it, I was like, I would wear that. And then yeah, I, it's my sneaky pick. Uh, I like uh, the Orlando. Uh, just the gradients, I think, is pretty cool. But I think the number one is what, for me, Doyle, is what you're wearing in the the pink Miami. We've been asking for that <laughs> for so color. long. And to, fi- yeah, to Listen, finally get if it. If you need to uh, use TV, I, a, a I know really... a guy. Because this guy has top-of-the-line stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs appliances? Uh, and I do, I do like the Austin uh, uh, kit. And our last question here, and we'll get the heck out of here, is uh, from Alan in Montreal. He says, if Extra Time could take their show on the road five times this year, where would you go and why? We had a long list of games, events, stadium openings that we should do. Yeah, I would say Nashville stadium opener. I would say... Rapids game or RSL game this week, so I could go skiing. I would say Vermont Green Stadium or uh, season opener. He's like name. Yeah. This guy's like Neymar, man. Come on. I yeah. still, I, I still can't believe you guys didn't say Portland Timbers new new kit. Like that kit is so far. Charlie, wow. everyone you gets the big one. You didn't say anything. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I can't Actually, believe you didn't throw that out there. That was just. That was. Legit. I like the idea of judging the. Two, like not just the new kit, but the two in tandem, um, and I kind of feel like Austin for me might take the double or or Vancouver. Or I like Vancouver. Yeah, Austin's is fire. Guacamole yeah. and then the, the yeah, black like and green. <laughs> <laughs> let me get that guacamole kit. I like. That. All right. Well, let us know. Look, I think we might be hitting the road this year, and we've got to come up with a list of places and things we want to go. I'll, I'll throw mine out. I always love going to the Open Cup final. I just think it's um, one of the best. It's a sneaky and amazing tournament, uh, and for the soccer nerds out there, North American ones at least, we all lo- know it and love it. And I, the finals I've been at for that have been really, really special uh, nights for those teams. So I'd throw that one out as one we should do. Charlotte's going to be wild. That that crowd is going to be crazy. And Dave's going to be there, so buy him a beer, everybody. All right, that, that's it for us. we got to let Doyle go, uh, and we've, we've been doing this long enough. The season is here. Week one is here, starting on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, MLSsoccer.com for all the preview coverage, everything you need, the schedule. Uh, sign up. Get your fantasy team going. Uh, Predict 6 uh, presented by BetMGM. We'll be back on Monday to break it all down. It'll be a special day, our first game breakdown of the season. Adios, everybody. Enjoy the weekend. Congratulations, you made it through more than an hour of extra time. That means you love the show, and if you love the show, you probably want more episodes. Click right here for more episodes of Extra Time, and here to subscribe to the MLS YouTube channel.
Thanks for following along.